It's impossible to see which way you have to turn to get to either dark or top. And if you come out into the middle of the small boat and look around, you can't see any entrances or exits at all where there are five. And when we look to the end from here, it almost looks like we turn to the left to get to top this, but we don't if we actually turn to the right. But the hills and trees blend in very nicely. So being uh, another open expanse of water, it's very shallow straight up through the middle here. So we're going to cut across to the right of Long Street to follow a deep water channel. And we actually stay in a very strict deep water channel all the way up to top this now. The upper reaches of the dart ahead of us are very shallow, very narrow, very quite tricky getting the larger boats up round the narrow bends. But thankfully we've got Damien steering the boat at the moment. Damien's really experienced. He's been driving for almost a fortnight. So we shouldn't have a problem getting to top there. Now it was also in this stretch of the river during the Second World War that the American forces drove hundreds of wooden stakes into the river bed. notice as we've made our way up the river today, and that's that the bottom of the trees of this river seem to end in a nice tiny straight line, and you can certainly see what I mean here on the right hand side of the boat. Well this is the high water mark, this is where the tide gets to, at the highest of the tides. And the reason for the straight line of the trees is that salt water is very, very poisonous to any living vegetation. So anything that's dipped or dangled into salt water for any length of time will eventually rot, wither, and then drop off. And that's why you won't catch any male members of the crew swimming in this river, just in case.
point of view on the right hand side is the second of the three villages that we pass. This is the village of Stoke Gabriel. And Stoke Gabriel is a really lovely village to visit. Sorry. The only trouble is this is we enter one of those notorious Devon country lanes. So it's a little bit of a pain getting down there in the car, but it is worth the effort, I must admit. Well the first thing you see really is you look in. There are several cars parked alongside the quay, right at the bottom of the village there. Now to the right of these parked cars, that quay drops down slightly to a weir or causeway, which runs right across the front of the village. Now there is traps, a very large mill pond that will be flooded. And of course this mill pond is home to lots of wildlife. At the high tide, the water floods in over the top of the weir to replenish the mill pond, but you'll see it's a few feet away from doing that at the moment. So there's lots of people standing along the weir doing what's known as crabbing. That's a favourite pastime in Devon. And on top it's the best place to do crabbing on the river. So parents, if you've got any nagging children that want to do crabbing, this is a very good place to take them. Now to the right of the uh, village you'll see the church of St Mary and Gabriel. I'm the Lots king of, of the world. And it does have a distinctive blue clock face on this side of its tower, which shows up a really bright blue colour in the afternoon sunshine. To the left of the tower, there's a very dark green tree in the churchyard, and this is an old yew tree. In fact, it's one of the oldest and largest yew trees in Great Britain today, and it's even recorded in the Doomsday Book. It has a trunk circumference of 28 feet now, and some of the branches at its base span 100 feet or more. They have to prop them up to stop them from snapping onto the gravestones beneath. Now, there is a funny old wives' tale connected to this yew tree, which concerns all the ladies. Now this stands to reason why most of the ladies in Stoke Gabriel are married to policemen. 